everything is perfect in every possible way. Oh, wow. I love being on YouTube. <laughs> okay. <laughs> This talk is going to be about, or this show is going to be about attitude. And I think having a positive attitude is important for my business. And it's important for your business. But maybe not in the way that uh, you think. So today on The Crazy Picker Life with Wheeler, Dealer, and Banana Peeler. <laughs> Welcome fellow pickers and would-be adventurers. Dealer here, over positive dealer here with the crazy picker life. This is the Wednesday edition. As promised, a little different vlog today. I'm gonna to talk about attitude and how it pertains to our business and my business. And hopefully, if there's uh, a few points that I can make that uh, hit home for you, it'll be a little bit about your business too. Now, we run a buying and selling business, an eBay business. Many of you are familiar with the channel. I do a daily vlog where we show the uh, ups and downs and all the buying and selling and picking and eBay and all the interactions with my family. This show is going to be a little more targeted towards a topic that is important in my business and it's probably the thing or the aspect of my personality that I wrestle with the most and it's probably the thing that if I am able to leverage it in a positive way it carries the most weight among anything I can do for my business and that would be attitude now there are many 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 different teachers out there, many different aspects of attitude. There's many examples of people that have uh, positive attitudes that have done well. And I think having a positive attitude gets a bad rap sometimes. I would like to think that for the most part, I'm grounded in reality and I'm not happy all the time and I'm not positive attitude all the time and I'm not fake very often but with that said attitude is what can make the difference between getting it done and not getting it done now let's talk about a couple things in attitude I've kind of been thinking about this on and off all day and you know there are a lot of examples out there of people that are over the top with their positive attitude it seems real fake and syrupy and I think for some people it's natural I, I don't know I just I, I think it is some people just are wired differently and what comes across is very very syrupy and it may not be to them. Uh, I think there are people that are just wired like that. Then I think there are some people that really try to be like that. And they think that's how they should go about their lives. More power to them. You know, I'm not here to slam <laughs> perceived fake or fake positivity or like, uh, you know, woo! <laughs> If that's what you got to do to float your boat, you know, more power to you. I don't think there's anything wrong with being happy. On the other side of that is like feeling crappy, right? Now, there's a lot of reasons to 
have a positive attitude. I mean, there's a lot of things going on in your life that are good. There's a lot of things going on in my life that are good. And I'll tell you the truth, I'll tell you it straight, I don't always appreciate the good things in my life. And I think a positive attitude really can be about appreciating even the little good things that you have going on in your life. I don't do that enough. I don't know if you do. Like I said, I think some people it's easier than others. For me, I think it's partially me. <laughs> and I think it's partially the stuff that I got going on. High pressure sometimes. Lots of activity sometimes. You know, I don't really know if I need to list all the things I have going on in my life, but I've got lots of kids going every which way all the time. Obviously, I'm married, which has pros and cons. I've got a business that has pros and cons. It's going all the time until I shut it off. I've got, you know, I'm a homeowner. We homeschool. I got that as a busy thing. I'm aging. I try to exercise. I like some things that are not the best for me, like beer. You know, you could just I could just keep going through all the things. Some of them uh, I bring on myself. Some of them are circumstance. Some of them, you know, hit me when I'm not looking. But really, I can choose how to respond or react to those. Now I've done a, I did another video a while back. I think the title is even you know, respond versus react or respond is in the title. You can look it up. I think it's a reasonably solid video if you haven't watched it. So there's positive and then there's like people that are a little too positive. There's um, books and tapes and stuff out there that talk about, you know, self-talk to yourself, talk yourself up. There's make it till you fake it good attitude. There's, um, you know, nothing's going to get me down positive attitude. I'm not really talking about any of that. That's really not what I'm talking about. But what I am talking about is what will make a difference in your business or in your life in a positive way. I'm not sure how I'm going to articulate all this, but I'm going to give you se several examples. All day long, for me, and again, this may not be you, or, um, you, you know, it may be a little different for you, or it may be you, <laughs> Uh, you know, all day long, I have little talks with myself in my head. And there's a voice in my head that says, don't get out of bed. <laughs> and then I say to myself, I should get out of bed. And there's that voice in my head that says, don't get out of bed. And, and there's this battle going on. And at some point, one of us wins. Now, there's very good reasons to stay in bed sometimes, and I'm not really going to go through those, but in general, there is a point in everybody's morning where there's a deciding point. Should I get on with it? Or should I not get on with it? And... These little battles, these little decision points, there's a whole bunch of them throughout everybody's day where you probably should do something or you probably won't do something, but you got to make a decision, right? Having a positive attitude about what you should be doing to me doesn't mean you get all flaky and you're laying there in bed going, I should get up. Woo! I am super excited. I popped straight out of bed. I didn't even, my feet didn't even hit the floor. Wham! Stood straight up on with my day. Woohoo! No coffee needed. <laughs> you know, but 
you got to win the battle. You got to get up, right? Some other examples. Everybody lists, everybody who watches this lists probably on Amazon or eBay, right? You list your items. Maybe you buy and sell in a different way. Maybe you just like my ugly face. I don't know. But let's say you're listing on eBay, right? There's going to come a time where you're going to run into some items that you have that are less fun to list than others. Or you're just not feeling like it and you're going to have that same talk. You're going to get to that point and you're going to be like, I should list those three items that are sitting there. And you look them over and you're like, I don't really want to list that one. I don't really want to clean up and list that one. I don't really want to test and list that one. And there's a point there again where you don't do it and go do something else or you do it. Having a positive attitude is is what's needed to push it to the do it, right? I'm going to define what I think a positive attitude uh, is in a minute here. Let's see if I can come up with another one. Well, for me, it's been easier than, than lately, but I like to get out and go running. I know all the benefits. I know how I feel. It helps me physically. It helps me mentally. I can clear my head. My body works better. Um, I'm getting older where I'm adding a little weight sometimes. It helps with that a little bit. It, uh, it just, it's all around good and I know the benefits. But there comes a time, a decision point. I could come up with an excuse not to run today or I could put the gears in motion, get the running clothes on, tell the boys if they're coming with me, we're doing it and run. And a positive attitude says run. Okay. So if you're having any of these decision points or conversations with yourself, if you're not winning the battle often enough, um, you may need to check your attitude. Okay, so if attitude isn't this flaky, super like grimacy smile, joker smile, running around, no matter what, you know, everything's great. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> well, like I said, I think some people are happy in that zone. And there are people that chemically, emotionally, physically, physiologically, they're happier. But I still think they're choosing to be that way. There certainly are some people that put themselves in a position not to be happy and not to be positive and not to have a good attitude and not to have a proactive attitude and not to have an attitude that um, is productive. Here's what I think having a good attitude means. Having a good attitude means two things. I think it's a two-step process. One, I think you need to define why you're here, what your goals are, what you're trying to achieve, who you're trying to attract into your life, what's the end result, what's the agenda, what makes you happy, etc. You need to define that. I think people with good attitudes have bigger goals and dreams. Now, you, we could have a whole nother talk sometime, and maybe we will, about how to define your goals and dreams. You know, some people's goals and dreams are a lot of hot air. They're more like wishes. They're more like, uh, you know, I wish I would win the lottery. They're not, they're not realistic, but it's a little different than that. I'm not going to get off on that tangent. It's your values. It's what do you stand for. I mean, if you if you really want to be miserable, you can you can define your dreams and your goals in sort of a miserable way. I mean, you can do that. And then I guess this talk doesn't really relate. But okay, 
So for myself, some of the values and some of the goals and things I have are have a successful business. To me, that means I got to be making twenty thousand dollars in sales a month. That's that's sort of the, the the stepping stone that I've defined right now. It changes. It's going to have to change down the road a little bit because I'm adding more people into my business, and twenty thousand is not going to go as far as it used to if I have four people working in the business instead of two, especially if I'm paying those people, right? Indirectly or directly. My wife would like a paycheck. She's going to get to share with me one. <laughs> but, you know, Wheeler wants a bigger paycheck once uh, once he graduates. I don't blame him. He's going to be more focused, right, Wheeler? So, I want a successful business. I want to have a healthy, intelligent, well street smarted, well book smarted, good spiritual values, good people values, family. That means the kids. I want to have a good relationship with my wife, Lon. I want to have uh, a healthy body. I want to go adventure on my time off. I want to be mobile and be able to go out and do some of the physical things that I do. I want to make a difference in my family's life. I want to show them some things in the world. So I've got all these values, I've got all these goals, I've got all these ideas, and for me I'm living them, okay? Right now I'm living a lot of those. They're, they take constant work, they take constant energy. There's constant decision points throughout my day, every day, on these values and goals. How, how I react to them, how I interact with them, how I push myself to do certain things, how I uh, make choices on what I use my time for, how I focus on what my time's for. But attitude comes into play with that. Now, attitude is a one-two thing for me. One is have these goals, have these values, have these things that are in your life that you're heading towards or in. And then the second part is your attitude is going to define if you're doing what you should be doing to maintain those things, those values, those goals, or reach those values or goals when it should be done. If you do what you should do when you should do it, you will have that. You will have the values. You will have these goals. You will head towards what you're trying to achieve. You'll maintain certain things like health, and exercise and relationships. If you choose too many times to avoid what needs to be done to maintain and achieve these goals, you won't maintain them and you won't be heading towards them. It'll be more like the lottery ticket. I wish I had this big eBay business, but your actions are not lining up with that thought process. Your attitude is not allowing you to take the actions needed to get there. Okay, so that's a lot. That's a mouthful. It's a couple mouthfuls, right? Okay, so... Let's go through a couple more examples. Maybe that will help. Now, I choose to take Sundays off, right? The way it usually works, unless we're on the road, and it sort of works the same way, but I don't just, if I'm heading home on a Saturday night and I'm not going to make it home before midnight, I don't just pull over and that's it, right? I don't, I don't have the uh, trucker mentality where if I, and it's not really a mentality, it's a law, 
I don't have the log book that says if I've logged my hours, that's it. I have to pull over and sleep. Now, I have pulled over and taken a nap before if I'm tired, but generally, Saturday night about 11 p.m., I'm winding down my business in my current schedule. Come midnight, I'm not doing business anymore. Saturday's over. Sunday's there. I don't do business on Sunday. It's a spiritual day for me. It's a family day for me. I don't work on Sundays. But many times, because of the nature of my business and how many orders I have come in, and I make the decision to run sales over the weekend, I make the decision to list so much stuff, come Monday, which could be 12.01 a.m. Monday, I generally have orders waiting for me, right? Now, I have found that if I do not get on those orders early enough, I have found that I will be backpedaling. Let's say, let's say I start doing those orders Monday morning at, say, 7 a.m. or 8 a.m., right? I can spend some time between 7 and 8 a.m. and shipping time, which is like 3 p.m., on and off. I've got a few blocks in there on and off, a few hours where I can pack orders. But generally, if I will wait till 7 or 8 a.m. to start with all the questions that have come in and all the miscellaneous stuff that needs to be taken care of to get my week started and things like... You know, I do school with the homeschool kids. The week is starting. The weekend is over. If I start at 7 or 8 a.m., I am backpedaling my week all the way into Tuesday, maybe Wednesday, maybe the rest of the week. I can choose to do that if I wanted to procrastinate. But I am better off, i found getting down here to my orders at 12.01 a.m., packing them till I'm done and going home, answering questions from the weekend, taking care of a few miscellaneous things, setting up my week, then I go home and take a nap, and then I get up, and then, then it's my day, right? And I'm not backpedaling. Or sometimes if the weekend works out differently, I'll set my alarm for 3 or 4 a.m., and if I wake up sooner, I'll come down here. If I'm dead tired and I sleep till 3 or 4 a.m., still I've got time to get in front of the wave. You know, I got time to pack my, my 8 or 10 or 15 or 20 or even 25 orders, whatever, right? Now, there is always a point at 12.01 a.m. or 3 a.m. or 4 a.m., there is always a point in there where I need to make a decision. And if my attitude is right, I'm down here. If my attitude is wrong, negative, it's a crapshoot. There are times where I've played the snooze game. <laughs> there are times where I couldn't do it. I, I just, I had a negative attitude. And then I paid the price, backpedaling all the way into the week. Everything feels like it's hitting you as opposed to you're ahead of the game. Now, I would have to admit that probably... 19 out of 20 times, maybe more, maybe more 29 out of 30 times, a high, high percentage, I am down here at 12.01 or 3 or 4 a.m. at a fallback. Maybe, maybe one time out of 20 or one time out of 30, I'm not. Now, that does not go into the Mondays that are shipping holidays. There are some Mondays that are shipping holidays. To me, that's just planned uh, a planned break. Sometimes we take vacations around those, Labor Day, Memorial Day. 
Sometimes we uh, are gone for the weekend and, and use that. But a shipping holiday on a Monday means I do not have to get up Monday morning at 12.01 a.m. or 3 or 4. I make the choice ahead of time on that. I take advantage of that. I'll either come, I'll come in whenever. It doesn't matter because there's nothing going out that day. So that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the decision point. I should be doing this. And then I've got a choice between saying yay or nay. Now in my business, if I say nay too many times to something like that, I'm not going to be hitting my numbers. I'm not going to be getting close to 100% positive feedback. I'm not going to be getting back to questions that come up from potential buyers on eBay quick enough. The whole thing starts to fall apart. So these decisions are important. I need to see if I unlock the door. Wheeler's not here and he's coming soon. Back soon. All right, so we're good. When he's done with his uh, health test and his other homework, he'll be down here. So that's one example and it's it's an example of starting my week right it's an example of staying ahead if I stay ahead of my week I'm happier I'm healthier I tend to get my running in I tend to not be as rushed with my kids and my wife Lon um, I might eat better I certainly give better customer service uh, orders go out quicker I don't make as many mistakes it's the way it needs to be, but it starts with attitude because if my attitude is bad, I'm going to squash my business a little bit. And you're either growing or going, okay? Your business is either growing or your business is going. Now, I might average $20,000 in sales forever. I might not grow that way. My business might not go to 30 or 40 or 50,000 in a month, but growing can also mean doing a better job. My margins uh, of profit and my debt, my margins of profit are bigger the longer I've done this business and my debt in my business and personal life is smaller. So, you know, growing can be smarter too. It doesn't necessarily have to mean more sales. Now, I hope not to like have slump months and go down and grow down into $10,000 a month sales, that would not be growing. <laughs> I may have some tough months. I mean, this, uh, this downsizing that we're doing, this changing to go on the road, it, you know, there's, there's some fluctuations. Who knows what's going to happen? I'm not too worried about it. But if I show you my numbers this month for March and it's not 20,000, it doesn't mean I'm dying. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll do what we got to do, right? Okay, so here's some, I think, I'm going to try to come up with some points in my business that really make a difference, okay? There may be other ones, but here are some ones where attitude and... I would like to think that my positive attitude is a little bit more like training. I've trained for it. Um, I've toughened myself. I've disciplined myself. I've lined myself up with my goals. I've got very, very sure about myself, where I want to head, where I want to be. I've been beat up enough where I don't feel like going back to settling for less and I think that all developed a tougher attitude and I, I'm going to continue to call it a positive attitude even though I don't consider myself really a positive person. I am more a problem solver and even even sort of a critical eye on things but I still try to maintain a very level positive attitude throughout you know it's it's a fine line it's a fine line let's talk about listing 
there are times in my business where I could easily list more or I could easily list, list less, list less items on eBay. And it's not always about the number of items, it's also about the quality of items and getting the, the big items listed when they should be listed, getting the seasonal items listed when they should be listed, um, not sitting there and picking out all the best items all the time, so listing the junk when you need to list the junk. There's a lot of decision points with listing. And I know, bottom line, if I don't list consistently, my business is slowing down. Okay? And so that that drives me. That drives me so that when I get to the decision point every day where I'm looking at my stuff, and I'm like, what are you going to list today? I try to raise myself up a little higher than a little lower. So, you know, it's it's... At, for me, it's a glance. I look at stuff, I'm like, oh, not that stuff again. <laughs> and then I straighten myself out, and I'm like, okay, tonight it's going to be five items, you know? It's going to be five. I'm going to hold myself to that. And then I just start. I just get into it, you know? But I could just e as easily go, uh the stuff. And then I could search out something else to do that's not listing, right? Now everybody thinks it's great that Wheeler's here and he seems to list a lot, right? Well, Wheeler does list a lot. He has his ups and downs. And, you know, he's 17 going on 99. And so there's all kinds of pros and cons in Wheeler's listing game. Um, you know, I'm not going to sit here and talk about those too much. I'm very satisfied with the job he does 90% of the time. But let me just talk about this. You know, I did help him get started long ago and work through all the teaching needed and all the bumps and bruises to get him and help him get where he is. Now, he's self-motivated, but that doesn't mean there weren't bumps and bruises. So I have paid some lumps and dues, but that's still not what I want to talk about. It is awesome that he's working here. It would be very easy for me to list a lot less and be satisfied with just him listing, right? But I know that's not how it has to be. I always have to be listing unless I have maybe two or three listers working for me. I still think that if you want to list the best items, if you want to buy and sell the best items and make the, the best profit in your eBay business, there's no better person than you, meaning me. I can still list in a laser beam way to get it done as good as anybody in my listing world. That's the way I feel. So even if I had Wheeler and Banana Peeler and let's say Kate and Benjamin listing, I should still be listing. But when I get to that pile of stuff and it's awful easy to say, oh, okay, Wheeler will get the number tonight. My positive attitude, I need to have that positive attitude and I need to hit something. Even if I'm feeling like listing nothing, I better put three items up or something, right? I better not make too many excuses. Now, your business dynamic is going to be different than mine, or it may be similar, or it may be different. <laughs> is that three things instead of two? Two possibilities diametrically opposed? <laughs> so you're going to have to, you know, feel that out. But I think most of you know what I'm talking about. I did a challenge for myself a while back. I had a whole bunch of items we had picked all summer. And October had come around. And October is a critical month in many people's businesses. 
October is the kind of month you wish you had it all listed because October is when the holiday sales start in a lot of cases. I think they start in September. October is almost too late. November, you're backpedaling. December, you got to keep listing, but it's too late. So, for example, I really got a positive attitude going and I proclaimed on my video that I would list 10 items minimum a day, every day, six days a week that we were in the office, if we were in the office for the whole month of October. And I think we picked maybe one Saturday, I don't know, but I did 10 items or more in a few cases every day consistently for that whole month. That was hard. That took a positive attitude. I had the items to do it. When October was done, I didn't do that anymore. And it felt weird because I was almost in the habit of doing it. And it was a really good exercise. And obviously we got a lot of stuff listed, had a very successful uh, fall selling period, put a cap on the year, do da do da day, right? <laughs> It would have been easy not to do that. I had a decision point where I thought of the idea and there was, a, there was a point where I was trying to talk myself out of it or talk myself into it and I made that decision to do it and it lined up with my goals of wanting to be successful in my business, wanting to, you know, show it on YouTube, wanting to provide... Uh, money for my family, which means opportunity to do things. So, um, what's another thing that's critical to my business? Well, answering questions promptly, coming to conclusions with people that have returns and situations with shipping on eBay. Um, shipping stuff out the door promptly. All those things, there are decision points. Sometimes I don't feel like packing those last three orders at night. Okay? So I might get this video done. It might be 11 o'clock p.m. or later. We might be here for a little while. I might just want to sort of fade off. I might want to just take care of some easy stuff. But I've got three orders sitting there. Okay? Now I know if I don't get those three orders done, I'll come in the next day and get them done. But by then the three orders could become five or six or even ten sometimes. And then it starts to become a problem. So it's better, it's a better decision point at 11 o'clock if I've packed those three orders. And again, if I have a positive attitude about getting my orders out, time, out on time because I know that it helps me meet my values and it helps me meet my goals, it helps me stay ahead. If I'm ahead, I'm happier with my family. If I'm ahead, I'm having better relationships and listening to people rather than saying, I can't talk now, I got to go pack orders. <laughs> it's proactive, which is a good word. Proactive is like pro-attitude. I like that. I like that proactive. Being proactive in your business and your life if it lines up with these goals and these values that you laid out, that's being positive. All right, so what if your business is not going how you like it? What if your business is not as profitable as you would like it? What if your business is not as big as you would like it? What if you're stuck in a job, part-time or full-time? What if you're stuck in a relationship you don't, value it's not going well what if uh you know you're not spending enough time with those you care about what if you're not exercising what if you're not meeting your goals so what if you know what if those things are not happening the way that you want 
and you want to turn it around? Well, I think it's two steps. And I did another talk, and somebody asked about this. You know, I've got 230 videos now or something like that, 200 videos. And I can't find the one on doing it until, until you're done. There was a good video. If anybody knows which one that is, message me below. I can't even find it in my own videos. It's, you know, you, you list until you get your listing done. You work until the job is done. You spend time in your relationship until it's a good relationship. I did a video on that and it, it was, I guess it was pretty good. It was pretty, um, it hit some people. Okay. So the two things you need to do are one, be clear on your goals and your values and what you want to do. Okay. Be clear on that. So you might not be clear on it if you're not achieving it. You might be cloudy. If you're cloudy, guess what? You're not clear. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> well, I mean, if you're an air if you're flying in an airplane and it's cloudy, that is not as fun as if you're flying in an airplane and the sun is somewhere behind you and it's clear. Okay? I went out hunting once and we don't have fog out here very often, but that morning it was so foggy you could hardly see and so we went out pheasant hunting and it wasn't that fun because you'd actually scare up a pheasant and you could you could hear them but you couldn't even see them. It would have been better if it was clear. So if you're uh, if your values and your goals and what you're trying to achieve, what you're really trying to achieve are not clear, that's a problem. That is your first step to having a positive attitude about your life and business. Get clear. The next thing is to wrestle with yourself endlessly to pursue those things. So, if you've been listing, listing 10 items a week and you want to quit your full or part-time job and go full-time, you need to wrestle with yourself when you're saying it's time to quit and you need to start listing that extra item. Or more. I mean, that's just obvious. You can't unless you're selling oddly priced, high priced, high margin things. You can't make a full time income very easily on 10 items a week, right? So it's not lining up with your values. If your value is to quit your job and do this full time, that's probably not lining up. So when you get to these decision points, and you can tell you're at a decision point because it's basically you're, you've reached a time where the decision is to do it and then you probably should do this thing, but you're trying to talk yourself out of it in a lot of different ways, right? If you reach one of those things, like again, if it's listing, let's, let's, let's change it. Let's say it's exercising. So if you get to the time that you set aside for exercising because you want to be in better shape and you don't have to go out there and go sparring with uh, Rocky Balboa or something like, you know, run 50 miles or something. But let's just say you're going to do whatever your exercise that you've come up with that lines up with your values and your goals and what you're doing. You get to that time and you don't really feel like it. This is one of those decision points, right, where... You should do it. You've put the time there. It lines up with your values to do it. But you're having this inner turmoil where you're trying to talk yourself out of it. This is the point that you've got to go for it. You've got to talk yourself away from that negative, And this is it. These little times that happen 
10, 15, 20, 100 times a day. These are the self-talks that you have to have where you go away from saying no to yourself and your values and your dreams and your goals and saying yes. That's the difference. That is the difference between where you are and where you want to be. That's it. Now, it may take a while. Nothing happens worthwhile. Nothing happens overnight. For me, my business, my business like this, this, this location, this whole thing, this did not happen overnight, and it did not happen without many, 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 many of those decision points where I said yes instead of, instead of no. I didn't give in to no. I didn't give in to the negative. I didn't give in to the excuses. I didn't give in to the procrastination. I didn't give in to the lack of clarity. I didn't get cloudy. I said, yes, I'm doing it. And I did it. Now, what I like to do when those decision points come up, I like to be proactive on those decisions and I like to look ahead and I like to map out my day and I like to give myself a planned break sometimes rather than beating myself up, okay? So you don't just do this stuff blindly and this is I think this is where I'm going to end. I'm going to give you an example. I had this oral surgery last week and they said don't do any heavy exercise and they <laughs> they've got their whole speech they're like don't even go up a flight of steps if it makes your breath get all out of breath and I'm like not quite to that point yet. But whatever. So I took the 4 days off. Monday I ran 2 miles. And I was glad to get out. And afterwards, I was like, oh boy, that was too much. And um, I didn't sleep well that night, Monday night. And I haven't really slept all that well since. And I overdid it, right? So um, I didn't run Tuesday. I didn't run today. I thought about it ahead of time. There was not a decision point where I said, all right, dealer, get out and run, you slug, <laughs> in a positive way. <laughs> you know, and then I didn't say, all right, you don't feel like it, don't run, and came up with 100 excuses. I was proactive. I said, look, dealer, you've run a lot in the last 25 years. You know that you will run again, God willing. But you're going to have to recover from all this, uh, this oral surgery and everything that's going on in your head and body and all that. And running right now is not helping you reach your long-term goals. In fact, you're just going to put that on hold. And so what I did is I felt better because I went out and I, I took the boys out to a place where they could run and I could walk. So I made a conscious decision that the alternative of walking was okay. Now you may want to do this certain times in your business, but again, there's a fine line between that and just saying, all right, dealer, obviously you're old and ugly, and running ain't your thing, forget it for the rest of your life. You know, that's not what we're saying here. So I didn't give up. I just gave myself a break. <sighs> ah, that wasn't so bad. Wasn't quite like a trip to the dentist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it does pay to have a better attitude. We all can have a better attitude. For me, though, take aside all the fake plastic attitude 
you know, okay, I got to talk about this. Whenever you're out, 90% of the time, you'll run into somebody, they'll be like, hey, how you doing? And you go, hey, good. <laughs> that's fake, but that's, you know, that's what everybody who's a friendly person, that's just what you do, right? Now, some people, myself included, certain times, I'll be like, oh, I'm awful. <laughs> and, I, and then I go, ah, I got you. <laughs> Mostly as a joke. There are some people that are just in that fog all the time, but that's that's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, really, you want to succeed in life and business, the attitude has to be there to do the things that you don't want to do but you should do when they should be done. That'll make a difference. Turn it around. Get clear on your goals, your values, your things you want to do. Make the decisions. Make the little decisions at that decision point to do it. Those will add up. They will add up. They will add up. I hope this talk was helpful. It was helpful for me. I need to hear myself um, reiterate some of the things that I do sort of on cruise control now. now. But it helps a little bit for me to go back and say, all right, how did I get here? How did I get here? That is not my beautiful house. <laughs> this is not my beautiful automobile. <laughs> how did I get here? Sort of a bad talking heads uh, impression. But the point is, you got to know how you got to where you got if you want to either keep going or change course or if it's heading the wrong way, you might want to look at what made you get to a better place at a different time. So this self-reflection is good for me. I hope it was good for you, though. If it was, give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. I like reading them. If I'm all wet and you want to throw me in a volcano, <laughs> there's a guy I used to listen to years ago. He's still out there. He used to say that, and I'd be like... Man, you are so plastically happy. But, um, you know, then I met the guy, and he just, he was really tuned in. He was really tuned in to getting it done. And so maybe he was that happy. I don't know. But he used to say that, you know, if you liked what I said, great. I'm very excited for you. If not, and you want to throw me, a, I'm all wet, and you want to throw me in a volcano, do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see you try. <laughs> oh, shoot. <laughs> Tomorrow, regular vlog, Thursday vlog. Probably list some things, pack some things. Who knows? I might even get out and run. Hopefully. Feeling like I'm getting old and I don't want to. Pick well. List often. Dealer out. A Wheeler Dealer Production. <laughs>